Okay, chapter three of The Tale of Despero by KD Camillo, with permission from Scholastic Publishing. Chapter three is called Once Upon a Time. And we know right now, going into chapter three, that Despero Tilling is um, different from all the other mice in the castle. And um, his brothers, sisters, aunt, uncle, all his mice relatives, even his parents, just don't understand. Um, so let's find out what's, what happens. When we left off, he could hear um, the sound of honey. Hmm. Despero's siblings tried to educate him in the ways of being a mouse. His brother Furlo took him on a tour of the castle to demonstrate the art of scurrying. Move side to side, instructed Furlo, scrabbling across the waxed castle floor. Look over your shoulder all the time, first to the right, then to the left. Don't stop for anything. But Despero was not listening to Furlow. He was staring at the light pouring in through the stained glass windows of the castle. I remember when he was born, the April sun was coming in through a stained glass window and um, directly into Despero's eyes. It reminds me of that part. He stood on his hind legs and he held his handkerchief over his heart and he stared up, up, up into the brilliant light. Furlo, he said, what is this thing? What are all these colors? Are we in heaven? Cripes, shouted Furlo from a far corner. Don't stand there in the middle of the floor talking about heaven. Move, you are a mouse, not a man. You've got to scurry. What, said Despero, still staring at the light. But Furlo was gone. He had, like a good mouse, disappeared into a hole in the molding. Despero's sister Merlo took him into the castle library. That's where the light came streaming in through tall, high windows and landed on the floor in bright yellow patches. Here, said Merlot, follow me, small brother, and I will instruct you on the fine points of how to nibble paper. Merlot scurried up a chair, and from there she hopped onto a table, and there sat a huge open book. This way, small brother, she said as she crawled onto the pages of the book and Despero followed her from the chair to the table to the page. Now then, said Merlot, this glue here is tasty and the paper edges are crunchy and yummy like so. She nibbled the edge of a page and looked over at Despero. You try, she said, first a bite of some glue and then follow it with a crunch of the paper. And these squiggles, they are very tasty. Despero looked down at the book and something remarkable happened. The marks on the pages, the squiggles, as Merlot referred to them, arranged themselves into shapes, and the shapes arranged themselves into words, and the words spelled out a delicious and wonderful phrase. Once upon a time. Once upon a time, whispered Despero. What, said Merlot. Nothing. Eat, said Merlot. I couldn't possibly, said Despero, backing away from the book. Why? Um, it would ruin the story. The story? What story? Merlot stared at him. A piece of paper trembled at the end of one of her indignant whiskers. It's just like Pa said when you were born. Something's not right with you. She turned and scurried from the library to tell her parents about this latest disappointment. Despero waited until she was gone, and then he reached out and with one paw, he touched the lovely words, once upon a time. He shivered, he sneezed, he blew his nose into the handkerchief. Once upon a time, he said aloud, relishing the sound. And then, tracing each word with his paw, he read the story of a beautiful princess and the brave knight who serves and honors her. Despero did not know it, but he would need very soon to be brave himself. Have I mentioned that beneath the castle there was a dungeon, and in the dungeon there were rats, large rats, mean rats. Despero was now destined to meet those rats. Reader, you must know that an interesting fate, sometimes involving rats, sometimes not, awaits almost everyone, mouse or man, awaits anyone who does not conform. See what happens to Despero next time. He's not conforming like all the other mice. Why can Despero read?